Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna to share three easy AI automations every CEO I know is using right now to save a whole bunch of time on boring, repetitive admin work. And these are not some crazy complicated AI automations that you need to hire someone to build it for you. These are super simple AI workflows built within Zapier, which is an AI orchestration platform. I'm gonna share step-by-step -step how I built this and I'll drop the templates in the description so you can follow along. So we're gonna talk about an AI workflow that's gonna help you prepare for all your sales calls. Second one, to help you manage all your business expenses. And third one, to help you review all the documents and contracts you probably receive as a business leader. All right, let's dive into all these one at a time. So I have a services business where we help businesses implement AI automation solutions. So when people book a call from our website, I need to know who they are, what they might want before I jump on the call. This is gonna help me better prepare for the call. Traditionally, what I would do would be to look at their company domain, then I would search their website, see what they do, look them up on LinkedIn, and you know, kind of get a sense of who they are and what their role might be, if they're technical, not technical, if they're gonna have influencing in the decision maker or not, are they even qualified as the lead we're getting on the call? After do all the research to prepare for the call, this could take 15, 20, 30, like, or even an hour for every single call that I have to prepare. But I was like, why can't we just use AI automation to eliminate all that work? Inside Loki. So here I have an automation uh, where I'm connecting Calendly to Clay and then to Slack. So what's happening is every time somebody schedules a call on the Calendly, this triggers the automation and a new record is created for them in Clay. So Clay is basically like a research agent for like GTM teams or sales teams. Basically, it's like a CRM where you can have like bunch of AI workflows that can enrich the lead. So here, if I just wanna show you quickly, if I wanna enrich the person, I can like pick all these workflows. So it connects to like bunch of different tools like Appify, Apollo, Captera, Clearbit. So it basically connects with all these different tools and does the research for that person or the lead automatically for you and enhances the whole database over here. So basically in this automation, what's happening is as soon as they book a call, we're sending that data to Clay. So we have a new record in Clay. So we can run those workflows within Clay. And then that's why we have a step here for delay. So we just want Clay to have enough time to run all those workflows that are predefined within the Clay uh, CRM. So here I have a delay for five minutes. That's enough time for my existing workflows in Clay to run. And then once we have those workflows run, I'm gonna find the same person back and send a Slack message to myself about the summary of everything I need to know about that person. Essentially what's happening here is that as soon as they book a call, we send all the information to Clay Clay does all the research about the person and sends a summary to us in Slack. So before the call, instead of me doing all the research manually, so I can just review the Slack message, have a quick summary of the person, what they do, basically everything that I would have done manually is now done automatically for me that I can review in like two minutes before the call, saving me all the time. So this is like my lead call prep workflow. You can call it like speed to lead perhaps. So entrepreneurs love this workflow just because like most of their role actually just involves sales calls. So it helps them prepare for those meetings like in a very fast manner. But I do wanna mention that this automation only works as well as Clay works to do the research. So sometimes, you know, it's gonna pull wrong information if like the company domain is missing or different people with similar names or whatnot and it cannot identify which one's which on LinkedIn as it's kind of doing its workflow automatically. So just so you know, this automation can have false data. So just make sure you do a bit of a sanity check when you do review the person, just to make sure it actually makes sense or not. So here's the automation I built. Basically, as soon as I add a photo of my receipt onto Slack, it's gonna extract all the information I need and add it to a spreadsheet automatically. Here, here's the data. You know, here's my spreadsheet with the date, expense, total amount, GST paid, PST paid, tip, and the category. And this is my receipt. So the information is accurate, so the automation works. So let me show you how you can build this without any coding. You know, you know, I like using Zapier, so I'm gonna use Zapier for this automation as well. And my first step is gonna be using Slack. So that way, every time I'm at a, you know, I'm at a lunch meeting or I have a business expense, I can just upload that receipt to Slack quickly and it's gonna trigger my automation right off the bat. So in Slack, my setup is gonna be, um, you know, the new file that's a trigger event. So that way, as soon as I upload the receipt, it's gonna trigger the automation. Under configuration, I created a new channel called expenses. So that way, this automation only triggers when there's a new file in this channel and not anywhere else in my Slack workspace. So for every step, we're going to just test it just to make sure it all works correctly. And now we're going to move on to our second step, 
which is adding the file to Google Drive. I mean, you may think it's redundant, but I'm doing it so that way I have like all my receipts in the same place and I can delete those photos off my phone. So again, completely up to you. Or you can skip the first step. Maybe you can just upload directly to Google Drive and that way that's gonna trigger the automation and you don't need to worry about Slack. So for Google Drive, again, a very similar process. You know, my app is Google Drive. My action item is gonna be upload the file. I'm gonna connect my account. And for configuration, I'm gonna like pick the folder. So I created a new folder for this. So that way I can have different folders for different years. And I'm I'm just going to upload the file over there. I'm going to test it to make sure it works correctly. And now I'm going to introduce my AI step. So I'm going to use ChatGPT as my app and my action event is going to be analyze image content with vision. So vision is like ChatGPT's AI product that looks at the images and can extract information, you know, make analysis and do all that jazz from it. Under configuration, I'm going to like keep a simple message that I'm attaching a receipt. Can you please extract this, this, this information from the receipt? That's pretty much it. And under image, I'm gonna like pick the file that I added to Slack. So that way it has context for the image and it knows what I'm asking it to do. And I'm gonna test the step again, just so that everything is working smoothly so far. And my next step would be to extract the data from the receipt. So I've already told AI that I need this, this, this information, but imagine like, you know, if you are working with ChatGPT and you ask it to like, hey, here's my receipt, do this, this, this for me. The result, you know, it's gonna be like like a paragraph. Even if you ask it to create a table, but you don't really know mm -hmm. what, and like, you know, when you need to add that information to spreadsheet, like, hey, you know, which one was like GST, which was like, you know, total amount, which was the vendor. So we're gonna take the unstructured data and add a bit more structure to it. This is why we're gonna use this action called extract structured data, again, with ChatGPT. So under configuration, you know, in the unstructured text box, I'm gonna add that image analysis that we did in the previous step. And under values to extract, I'm just gonna put all the values I need to extract from that analysis. So it's a vendor name or the business name, the date of the receipt, the expense category, total tip given, the GST, PST charge, and the total amount. So now what it's going to do is it's going to create all these variables. So I can just like ask, you know, what was the business name? What was this? And it knows which information that that one's referring to, which is going to bring to my next step to add all the data into a spreadsheet. So I'm going to create a new spreadsheet row as my action event. And then under configuration, I'm going to pick the spreadsheet. So again, I created a new spreadsheet here. So I can have different spreadsheets for every year. And I'm going to select the worksheet and I'm just going to map fields one to one. So date, Okay, now I know that, you know, from structured data, this is my variable for data, the receipt. I'm gonna input that. Expenses, I'm gonna pick that. Total amount, I'm gonna pick that, and so on and so forth. All right, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna test it, and if everything looks good, hit publish and automation is good to go. Now, every time you upload a receipt onto Slack or Google Drive, it's gonna extract all the things you need to know and add it to a spreadsheet. So when the year end comes and your accountant is like, hey, I need all that information to file taxes for you. I'm like, dude, here's a spreadsheet. It's all done already. Nice. So once I was done building the automation, I mean, it took me like five minutes. Uh, I was like, did I just over-engineer this? Like, shouldn't QuickBooks have a feature to do that as well? So I went into perplexity and I was like, hey, you know, can does like QuickBooks Online have this feature on the free plan? And I was like, shit. So to make myself feel better, I was like, if QuickBooks Online does have that feature for free, like if I build this automation, is this really a real use case here? <laughs> so then I was like, okay, I'm gonna try that feature in QuickBooks to see if it's actually useful or not. So I did. And it turns out, uh, once I do do the QuickBooks feature, it's just a lot more complicated. Like it just takes more time and it's not gonna pick the right tax thing either. So I actually have to pick that manually. Plus like, you know, I'm not gonna be able to generate the spreadsheet I need anyway. So like my kind of needs a spreadsheet anyway. So might as well just use this automation and maybe you can add a step here in my automation to also add this to QuickBooks. So all the record is also in the QuickBooks all done automatically. In this workflow, what happens is that as soon as I get an email with a contract, the contract is sent to AI, which reads the whole fine print, everything that's in the contract. And then I have a prompt that asks AI to look for certain things. Maybe it's like, you know, exclusivity or like the rights of the usage or any liabilities and stuff like that. And then right away, I get a Slack message telling me that these are the red flags in the contract. These are the yellow flags in the contract. And these are the green flags. So before I read through all the contract, which I don't like reading like long, lengthy legal document, I already have a summary in my Slack with things I should be paying attention to, which is super cool. It's kind of like my legal sidekick. Nice. But again, I just want to warn you. I mean, you know, we're building automation, but this by no means is a legal advice. All right. So before we build automation, we need to think about the automation. We need to think about all the steps that's involved so we can build something that's fail proof. 
I just went through like step by step. So, you know, I'll get an email and email will have an attachment and then attachment will then go to AI, so chat GPT, which will have my prompt. So that way I know, you know, like I'll tell it to look for certain things or what are the red flags, what are the green flags, what are the yellow flags, and then it will send you a Slack message. This workflow in theory makes sense. Then I'll have to put this on Zapier. So as soon as I started building, I realized that, okay, if I do it for every attachment, it's gonna run even if when it's not a contract, which means I have to add a filter. After filter this automation, so it only runs when it's a contract. So that's why we have like a couple extra straps in this automation. I spent a couple hours trying to figure everything out on how to kind of extract all the data and stuff, but you guys get the final version. I'm gonna show you exactly what's the best workflow to make it happen. By the way, thanks to Zap here for sponsoring the video. Let's get into it. All right, our first step is to trigger our automation. Our trigger app is gonna be Gmail and our trigger event is gonna be new attachment. I connect my account where I receive all these contracts and then under configuration, I'm just gonna like pick my inbox. So one of my first mistakes was that I actually only picked like chat or something. So I was not picking information from the right inbox. So here, if you have like different sort of folders and stuff like that, you can pick those. If you have a separate folders for like contracts, brilliant. You can probably skip the second step. If not, you know, most of us probably just have a standard inbox. So just make sure you have it as inbox and then test just to make sure it's pulling up the record from the emails with attachment. Then our next step is to filter out only the emails with contract. So here we're gonna use filter by Zapier and under configuration, you can just use certain keywords, you know, your workflow may use in terms of those email subject lines to be able to filter those files you wanna use in your workflow. For example, for me, it's like agreement, contract, partnership. Those were like the three keywords I think like every contract I'm gonna receive is gonna have. So I just have those as our conditions. So the automation will continue only if the attachment file name has one of those keywords. So based on the field or industry you're in, these keywords may differ. So just look at the attachments that you receive and see if there's any patterns in those keywords. All right, this is where like, you know, the, there was a little tricky part that I had to figure out and I used a lot of perplexity to help me figure this out. So, you know, every time you start building a Zapier automation, chat with perplexity, chat with chat GPT or Claude, it'll help you fix it. So I'm using an app called pdf.co. Again, this is within Zapier. So I just connected it and my event is PDF to anything converter. So since chat GPT can't really take any attachments in the automation workflow, I had to convert the PDF sort of text into like PDF content into like a text file. This is essentially what we're doing here. And then, you know, under the configuration, I'm just saying like plain text without layer, no scan PDF, but cheaper, but faster. So basically like this tool has a bunch of different things it can do in terms of output format, HTML, JSON files, and all that stuff. We just wanted plain text file. My source file here is like the URL of the attachment that we are receiving. And that's pretty much all I had to like configure here. And then I tested it to see how well it works. Okay, so yeah, this is the URL. Just copy it and open it just to make sure that you're able to extract the text. So if you see the same text as you had in your PDF, which means this step is working fine. So we're gonna move on to the next one. So this is gonna feel a little intimidating, but we're gonna be using code by Zap here as our application, but don't worry, we're just gonna like copy paste the code here. So you don't have to know coding at all. We just have to copy paste something. What's going on here is that, you know, when we do the pdf.co, I tried a bunch of options. There's no way of getting around this. When we're doing the conversion from PDF to a text, it is still in a URL. So URL is just basically like a link to a certain website that's being created for a short time for like a placeholder where this text is gonna live. So we can't really send that to ChatGPT. It's the same situation, You're sending a URL or a PDF or something. That's why we're using this, a small little like a code function. But hey, you know, once you do this, it's gonna feel cool that, uh, you know, you did an automation that actually involves some code. Kind of cool if you've never done anything with code before. So all you gotta do here is pick the app code base app here, then run Python. Then for configure, just put URL as your data input. And then we're gonna pick the URL that our previous step is generating with all the text stuff. And now what we're gonna do here is just, you know, either you can generate with AI. So you can just tell AI like, you know, what do you want to do? That's pretty much what I did really. Like I didn't even go to perplexity to get the code. I just told like, I just want to extract the text in the URL and output as a text. That's pretty much all you gotta do. Just explain in plain, simple English language, what sort of code you wanna write and it will generate the code for you. Or, you know, I'm just gonna put this, uh, I mean, it's probably gonna be in my template or I can put this in the description as well, just leave a comment. I can, or you can just, you know, screenshot this, like use a black box or something, screenshot from my video and just like copy it. This is the code you need, that's pretty much it. Now we're gonna go into testing and now we see our output as text. So instead of having a URL, we have this whole text of the contract, that's exactly what we wanted to extract. All right, this was kind of like a intermediate step, which was like a bit of a bummer, building this fun automation. 
information. So we're gonna move on now, 30 more seconds. All right, next step, ChatGPT. So we're gonna pick ChatGPT as an app. Our action event is gonna be extract structured data, and then we're just gonna connect our ChatGPT account. If you have not done so before, it's gonna guide you through step by step on how to use API key to like sort of connect your ChatGPT account. Assuming you've watched my other videos, you know how to do this step. We're just gonna continue on. So under unstructured test, we're gonna take our text from the step four. So now we have all the content we had in the contract. Now we're gonna pick our model. So I'm just using GPT-40 mini. I think for the stuff we're doing, just pick any model, it shouldn't work. Now we're gonna talk about a prompt in the description. So my prompt here is uh, take a look at the content of the new attachment that was received. If it's a contract related to an influencer partnership, please review the contract and tell me if there's any red flags or yellow flags in the contract. I should review before like sort of signing sort of situation. And then here are some things I care about. So timelines, exclusivity of the contract has exclusivity. That's a red flag for me. Uh, con content ownership and rights. If the brand wants to own the content rights, that is a red flag for me. If they want to use the content organically, that's fine. But if they want to use content for paid usage, that is a yellow flag and must be flagged for review. Again, exclusivity for me, it's fine, but it's just that I need to know that we've already talked about this. It's not like this kind of slide those things into the contract. Expect me to not find, like, you know, read this to like the line by line, and then I'm like tied to it. So it's just good that AI yeah, can like do all this work for me. So when I'm reviewing the summary, I'm just like, cool, they have exclusivity. We didn't talk about it. I'm just gonna message them like, hey, what about this? We didn't talk about this. Please identify any clauses the, where I will not get paid or contract will can get void. So I wanna know like, what are their conditions for me to like not get paid? Cause maybe they're trying to like, you know, hustle me or something. Please prepare a summary, break it down by red flags, yellow flags, and green flags. So I can review it quickly, keep the structure easy to digest. So here under values to extract, I have a few things, payment terms, timelines, brand name, green flags, yellow flags, red flags. If you have like one of those variables, that's gonna be harder to explain. You have an option down here to like explain more to AI. Like what do you mean by that sort of variable? And then our last step is just gonna be taking all the summary and send it to us in Slack. So here my app is Slack. It's a direct message from my account. And then under configuration, this is kind of like beam message structure, like, hey, new contract received, brand, timeline, payment terms, just FYI, some things to check in the contract. The red flags, yellow flags, and green flags. That's pretty much it. Once you do that, we're gonna test, we're gonna publish, and our automation is ready to go. Now, next time I receive any contract, before I read the contract or sign the contract, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna check my Slack messages, and I'm gonna have exactly what I need to know. So here's this contract uh, from a company I'm partnering up with. You'll see a video soon. Um, it says, the red flags are influencer must not make negative comments about the company. Influencer can be terminated for public disrepute. Company has broad rights to terminate. And now here I have the red flags, I have the yellow flags and the green flags. I read these flags and I was like, okay, this seems all good enough for me. Like, you know, I don't really care about these things. Everything seems in accordance to what we spoke about. I'm reviewing my contract. Like I have a bit more at peace. I'm not really missing anything. Like it probably didn't oversee anything because now I have like two sort of like points of references. One is the summary and two of me reading. So I feel a lot more confident while I'm signing the contract. Maybe in service business, you want to see if your client is filling all the forms or if anything is missed. You can have this workflow, go through everything and flag what's missing. Maybe in real estate, you want to go through if anything that that's like out of the ordinary. Maybe we're in finance, you know, you wanna go through if any sort of number looks off or any information that's missing. You do like a lot of RFPs or proposals. You wanna make sure that nothing's out of the ordinary or everything sort of makes sense. There's no red flags or yellow flags. So like based on what you do in a workflow is, I'll let you be creative with the ideas. By the way, I'll link the template in the description. So if you just wanna use the template, so that way you can like, you know, build this automation in like two minutes. And it just saves me a lot more time. So those were three step-by-step -step tutorials for easy automations that every CEO should start doing if they don't do it already. If the video was useful, you learned something new, give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Your Chief A Officer signing off.